All right, here we are on Let There Be Talk. This is Dean Del Rey, and uh, <laughs> I got a great guest today for you. It's Dean Carr. Dean motherfucking Carr. Yeah, director, uh, metalhead, a photographer. Shark enthusiast. Shark enthusiast. I forgot. We, we dove with Great White Sharks. We dove together with Great White Sharks, motherfucker. That's right. We, uh, we might as well talk about that first. So what year was that? I mean, you go every year, right? I go twice a year. I just finished my 13th trip. 13th trip? The first two started in Australia, and, and as I told you on the boat, I flew all the way to Australia, living my dream to go see a great white shark, and both times I saw no great white sharks, so fuck Australia <laughs> and fuck your great white sharks because it's bullshit. That was for uh, the Deftones video, right? The first time was for the Deftones video. Right. And that was nice to have someone pay for it. Yeah, free. Yeah, because, man, I mean, you and I went. Now, we go out to the 200 miles off the coast of Baja to the Guadalupe Islands, and uh, we're on, what was that boat we were on? It was killer. Well, back then, it... It, it was that nice big one. Was it the Solmar? Or yeah, what, or it was. The, the Mexican boat. That's right. The boat from Mexico. Because yep. there was... A, Another boat that was from San Diego. No, this is the called Mexican the Searcher, boat. and it was kind of that small, a little right? sketchy, and I think a lot of the, like Speedhead guys were working on. on oh, that really? Boat. Yeah. <laughs> Speedhead. Did you ever see him doing speed? No, but I I know that after I had stopped going on that boat, that certain people had gotten fired for doing speed, or um. Yeah, little just uh, sharks and Gamble, meth. Gambling problems. Gambling problems. I love it. Now, we went out there. Here's the thing. If you've never dove with a great white shark, which you haven't, you know, here's what happens. You get on a boat and you ride for, what was it, like 18 hours? It's 18 to 20 hours to get to the island. We ride on a fucking boat through like crazy waves and shit. You gave me some excellent pills that I just woke up and we were there. I don't know what they were. I just took them. <laughs> You said, take these and we'll be there. Good. Yeah. And then I woke up. I remember we put our wetsuits on around seven in the morning, immediately got in the cage. <laughs> right? That's fucking right, brother. And then this is the coolest part. We're in the cage for about 30 minutes. And I'm like, yeah, this is bogus. There ain't no sharks here. We've only been there 30 minutes. We're going to be there a week. And then here comes this fucking Greyhound bus float by and i remember you hit me and went, boop. yeah you hit me you go boop, 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 boop. and i look and there it is it looked like a fucking greyhound bus it's so huge it's so huge you can't you can't tell anybody how big it is you can't describe that to nobody until they fucking see it for themselves it was actually nerve I, I was freaking out like what we're in cages of course but this thing and you know what i realized that jaws hit it on the money because they don't swim Right, they just kind of float by because they mm. kicked their tail like a half hour before. Yeah, <laughs> Poof, trip and glide. Baby. Yeah, trip and glide. Now we got out of the cage. We did get out of the cage. We went know? down to the other cage. Yes, I had some panic attacks on that. <laughs> <laughs> but but also you dealt with some issues probably and thought about how you were the freest you've ever been in your life to fucking be outside of the cage. With an 18 foot great white shark cruising, yeah. cruising by, you and you didn't have any fear because they're. I trust them, man. I trust those sharks. <laughs> I don't trust sharks. No, I do. I trust you. I don't know why, but we were out there outside the cage with sharks around us. Yeah, we were outside the cage. <laughs> we're fucking crazy. Yeah. Sometimes I tell people that story and they just go, "This guy's yeah. a liar." <sighs> I wrote my will last last year. My my body is to be cremated. Half of my remains are to be given to Great White Adventures and taken out to Isla Guadalupe. And I personally wrote the word strewn, S-T-R-E-W-N, strewn on the back of the largest white shark that is at the island at the time. And, and here's the, the clause. If... The ashes do not touch the shark. It doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> you would love to read my will. It's pretty damn funny. What do I get? I'll give you whatever you want. But, I, I but uh, like Judas Priest, Beyond the Realms of Death is fucking my funeral song. That is my fucking song. That's the song you picked? Yes. Yeah. 
I remember we were in the cage. They have actual underwater music, and we were playing like Slayer and stuff. Wasn't that a great time? We can't do that anymore. It's it's. I can't. No, it's a natural preserve since you've been out there, and and all the rules have changed. There's no speakers underwater. Yeah, we had speakers underwater. We were pl playing the, the soundtrack to the apocalypse. We were. It was Slayer. It it was unbelievable. Die by the sword. And here comes these sharks. <laughs> and you just yell at him. You go, sharky, shark. Shark. <laughs> I got to tell you, though, that was my lifelong dream, man. I saw Jaws when I was young, and I always thought, like, ooh, I'm going to go to school and be uh, Richard Dreyfus, you know? But no, nah, school sucks. Why would you want to be Richard Dreyfus and not Roy Scheider? Schneider, well, I wanted, I wanted to be that guy that had the money and could just be out there in his cool yacht. Remember, he had all the good shit. He had a cool boat, but he also flew in from like Washington D.C. So I don't think that was his boat. He was just a, he was just a young Jewish boy. He was a poser, right? Like a shark poser. He was the most annoying part of the movie to me, if you ask me. Well, well, here's it's the deal. It's Quint, or you don't want to be no. Richard Dreyfus. No, I want. I'm saying not the character. I wanted to be like. It made me want to go to school and study sharks at a young age. That's what I'm saying. I don't want to be him. Of course, I want to be Quint, drunk and salty, with a million catches under my fucking, uh, you know, belt. You know what I mean? And saying cool shit like "Don't forget your rubbers, chief." Ha <laughs> ha! Right? That kind of stuff. They did so much work on that, and his whole character was based on on a famous shark shark hunter that was out of Montauk. And, yeah. Uh, I can't remember his name. I'm, uh, Alf Dean. Alf Dean. Alf Dean. He's a, another Dean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Dean Carr and Dean Del Rey. Dean Carr. Okay, so we went shark. We jumped right into that, but let's get into what you do. Um, probably one of the, uh, I mean, I just read right here. What was it? It was, uh, who gave you this uh, award? Here was it. Uh, Kerrang! Magazine recently listed Dean Carr as one of the most 100 most influential people in the music industry. All right. Now, I'll just give you a rundown of some videos he's done. First of all, you, you did those... Uh, those um, Dave Matthews videos, and, and the, at the time, they were so ahead of their time. You did the one right with the head on the ground and stuff? We started with Crash Into Me. Yep. And then we went up to Amazon and did that, that one with, the, with Dave's head, the decapitated head. For Unbelievable. Don't Drink the Water. Yeah. Bitchin' video. But your videos, okay, let's get a rundown here. Love this one. So you want to be a rock superstar? Yeah. Cypress so Hill. Um, you, uh, I mean, let's get it here. I'll just kind of give you a quick blast here. What's this John Lennon with Cheap Trick? I'm losing you. That was uh, given to me by Yoko Ono, and it was a... Actually, the musicians that played on the original song, I'm, I'm losing. I love you. that song. Yep. And who played on the fucking track? Who did the music? Cheap fucking trick. Back in the day, they did? Rick Nielsen and Bunny Carlos did did play that with, with Tony Levin from King Crimson. Whoa. <laughs> so, so I brought all those three guys together, and we took John Lennon's artwork his drawings yep and i hired an animator in burbank to bring like to to draw like it was like a, a sketch process so i had like basically cheap trick and 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 um tony levin playing bass and all this like black ink starts to unveil john lennon's artwork wow and Yoko serves us with tons of photos. There's all kinds of rare, rare John Lennon photos, and I still have. A, I got to keep a lot of those photos. I'm wow! Really happy with that. But, but after we did the job, I ended up. I was. Sh I don't know when I was shooting. I was in New York, and Yoko invited my producer Arthur and me to the Dakota, and she fucking made us fucking dinner man. wow i love the dakota when you get there it's eerie right you got you're out front you just know what happened if you're like a 70s kid like us you know it's just brutal eerie shit but she made us dinner all right so here here's the rundown ozzy you know marilyn manson dave matthews duran duran uh deaf tones um iron maiden maiden, maiden. <laughs> yeah maiden 
Uh, three Doors Down, Amen, Stevie Nicks, uh, Mushroom Head, Queens of the Stone Age, uh, Mud Vane, uh, Puddle of Mud, Cypress Hill, Alter Bridge, Everlast, uh, Tommy Lee, uh, Shooter Jennings, a couple videos from him, Slayer, you did that movie, Still Raining, which is amazing, um, Chris Doherty, Velvet Underground, a couple videos, uh, Willie Nelson, Lisa Marie Presley. I mean, it's the list is insane. Lisa look great, man. Yeah, she's wow. she's super cool too, right? Super hot. Yeah, I went to a party at her house once, and she was so cool. Totally, like like the most down to earth person, and yeah, no, yeah, no, I couldn't no win. stardom hit has hit that girl at all she's I, just, I was in her house and she had some dope kung fu fo uh, photos of elvis did you see those i didn't see kung fu photos of elvis. actual ones in the backyard of elvis just doing kung fu with like he's like doing kicks with lisa marie as like seven years old in the backyard i love it i just looked at those and was like that's fucking elvis doing kung fu <laughs> so your your videos are incredible looking and stuff. How did you learn to do that shit? Well, the videos came secondary to my career as a photographer. That's correct. Which is half of what I do. Yeah, your photos are amazing too. Well, I mean, thank you, Dean. I mean, we were just looking at uh, stuff on your uh, Facebook. It's Dean Carr, K A R R. If you want to see it, uh, your photos are insane. I had never thought that I was even going to get into doing film and uh, just thought I was going to just be a still photographer always. I went to college five years in Washington State and didn't learn a fucking thing. I just learned how to drink a lot and, <laughs> and bang chicks. You're good at that, right? Yeah, I'm a champ. <laughs> oh, man. You're but from Seattle. I'm from Seattle, so then I I was working at a cemetery for six years and applying to this school in Pasadena called the Art Center, College oh, yeah. of Design, which is prestigious fucking Super art cool. school. And they denied me twice, <laughs> and then I, I sharpened my, my, I don't know, my application a bit, and then they accepted me on full scholarship. Wow. <laughs> After they said no like you're not good enough to go here twice and then i i went there and by second semester i was working for hustler magazine yeah shooting naked chicks shooting pink man whoa yeah what, what year was that that was like uh eight 1990 to nine i don't know i worked there for like six years wow did you know julie kennedy she was like a photo editor there sounds very familiar yeah yeah i, I knew her she like uh she worked for hustler and rip at the same time it was yeah all larry flint it was all larry flint yeah he's a bad so you're shooting pink that's your first job that was my first job and i'd be so excited and i was just a kid and i'd come home and show my parents hey look what i just shot oh like, <laughs> and they show full-on pussy it's like two chicks pussy on pussy. That's right. It was like Playboy and then Penthouse and then Hustler was for real rub outs. Yeah, you can't go back to Playboy after you fucking learned about Hustler. Yeah. Now you're shoot how what you're shooting every day, Hustler? I was skipping classes and they were like, This guy's like got a real creative eye and it's like giving a whole new like style to to the adult industry. Yeah. And I liked it. The benefits were really nice. Yeah, were you getting like smokers and stuff? It's a lot of smokers. No shit, huh? Like you would shoot them and then they would just fuck you and stuff? A lot of stuff like that. That's awesome. <laughs> I love that. Because not, not only do you get the fucking, but you got photos of them uh, like, to take home. It was fun. God, how long but, did you do that? Uh, I think once the music stuff took off like in a fucking, like a fucking missile... After I was like doing Tool, fucking Undertow, and Pantera, Far Beyond Driven. Just photos, you mean? Photos. But then I, I started getting too busy because there wasn't much. The the Larry Flint check that I got was, wasn't big enough to to really keep me interested. I was, I was on, to, on to bigger things. But I remember I'd always get that Larry Flint check, and his name was there, and it had a rainbow underneath it. Oh yeah? yeah it was, what was the rainbow about? I don't know. You, I don't think it 
It was just happiness, I like pot at the end. I of wouldn't the... look too deep into, into right. the Larry Flint rainbow, but it was a rainbow colored check. <laughs> <laughs> you ever talked to Larry? No, but I went to his Christmas parties, which were always awesome. Yeah, you would go and wait in line. You would wait in the longest line, to, almost to kiss like the hand of God. And I went down on my knees and I fucking grabbed his head and I kissed it and I said, Thank. "He had no idea who I even was. Yeah, I'm just a guy that." You know, shoot, shoots these periodic things for your magazine. <laughs> <laughs> Did they say, what are you doing, kissing my hand? No, he just could see I was outside the, the square. And then how'd you get into the music stuff? Like from working there, like Rip or something? Uh, a lot of stuff. I started out, um, I had a good friend, uh, Dino Paredes at Priority Records and really gave me my first break. Over there, and I was shooting like everything for, for like NWA and and. Oh, uh, shot NWA. Yeah, like well, when they when they were starting. No, no, it was like just before Eric died. Oh wow! But, but I did a lot of stuff with Easy. Yeah, but a, a a lot of their acts at Priority Records, and then that went over to Ding Ding, and that went over to Ding Ding, and then t Tool Undertow like exploded. That was. Yeah, so the fat lady and the pig on the forks, and that was your now your style is so radical. Like that photo, you it's epic. Yeah, well, Adam Jones had a, a huge part to do with the creative on that that stuff, and then uh, Pantera came along. I remember I flew into Puerto Rico to shoot them. They just came in from Venezuela, and they all had food poisoning and massive diarrhea and they were sick as shit and they were like let's get this fucking done and we and i scouted the day before and i found this waterfall that was like two hours outside of the city and and uh we had to drive all the way out there this was when andy gould and walter what's his name walter o'brien was managing them <laughs> just when those guys were just like kids and they're shitting their pants on the ride out the band was. Yeah. Not the managers. The Just band. fucking food poisoning. But uh, we took him to this waterfall, and I remember Phil fucking getting so fucking pissed off, and he goes, God damn it, we ain't no jungle band. <laughs> he said that? He says, God damn it, we ain't no goddamn jungle band. <laughs> when I see him these days, I don't, I don't even bring up that thing because i don't even know that he remembers that i was that guy oh that's probably that better i'm up to the fucking waterfall like, <laughs> sorry i'm trying to do something cool for you but they all had food poisoning <laughs> then you just start fucking working like crazy right i mean i think the dave matthews videos really like threw you on the top right that and the manson sweet, oh yeah sweet, sweet dreams. dreams sweet dreams you like working with manson I, I love it, man. He's a smart motherfucker. Yeah, he is, huh? Very well-spoken, very creative, and can't say a bad thing. Wh who Who's, like, your influences? Like, Die on Airbus or something? Like, uh, Well, definitely uh, Jan Saudak from Czech Republic, if you know his work. It's, like, black and white, but he goes in with brushes and paints color on on top of the uh, black and whites very erotic joel peter wicken is a friend and a mentor of mine like i collect his work and um a lot of painters i mean a lot of stuff like i see around your house i mean you and i like we we love the same same art it's we like do man mary karnowski gallery is number one in the house man yeah just the best stuff it's like always radical and visual, you know, like Todd Shore, Mark Ryden, uh, you know, Robert Williams. I mean, he kind of put that kind of art on the map. Yep. But uh, it's kind of getting a little stale right now because everybody kind of tries to be like Mark Ryden. You ever notice that? It's like, oh, man, again? I mean, I love Mark Ryden, but I don't like the other guys trying to be him. But his paintings cost You're like a million dollars. I mean, I see that with with my photography or whatever. There's like... 20 copycats out there oh yeah absolutely i mean once you see a style then people go we want that style but we can't afford dean Carr. who can we get right it's a shame the music industry it's 
it's in a shithole, man. It is. Like, I, I get three calls a week about a music video, and they're like, well, what, 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 what's your budget? It's like, we fifteen grand or something. It's like, you know, I got to make a living, but I want to, I want to do something nice for you, but I can't do anything that you'll be proud of for fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah, like what did the Dave Matthews video cost? That don't drink the water one. Maybe two hundred fifty. Two hundred fifty. That thing looks dynamite. The Cypress Hill was maybe. We did rock superstar and we did rap superstar, so we had to do two videos, and that was like six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. It's like you fucking think that budget's around anymore? The fuck no. I do maybe one or two videos a year now, and. Anybody that's trying to get into that business, I wish you luck, but there, there ain't, there's, there's no money to be made there. It, it seems so like I, now... I, I got to get paid to get out of bed. <laughs> it seems like now they just say, have your friend shoot it on a red cam and just turn it, right? It's just all no, junk. No, even the red camera's like out of the budget. It's so expensive. It's like $1,500. Oh, fuck. So it's like, get your Canon... 5D? Yeah. <laughs> it's all Canon. <laughs> they got the whole fucking industry like just, just cornered. Well, it's shit music, shit videos, and uh, y you know they they just don't care. It's just like you know cookie cutter. Just do forty bands, maybe one sticks. That's that's the deal. They yep. they try to do as many of these things for no money and maybe make a like a regular fee. Yeah. What's the highest budget video you did? I don't know, man. Maybe probably that Cypress Hill for six fifty. Oh yeah, because it was two vids. Well, wow. now it was, it was just two edits. It was like one shoot, but it was two edits. Oh yeah, because it's just a change of the lyric, and there was a different vibe to the rock one. Yeah, right. We what had, we had um, Nadia from cold chamber come in and play bass we put some sex sexy stuff in there that was a great video man that was a, that's i love uh, that song yeah. my favorite part in it is when he's like better hold on to your money man somebody else gonna come in switch it up do what you're doing put a spin everlast. on it that's yeah ever everlast he's so great on that because he's so like so true you know he's great that was one of my favorite videos I ever did was Forever Last, the, the white trash, beautiful, black and white, with Aaron Paul from... Uh, from oh, Breaking uh, Bad. Breaking Bad. Was Aaron Paul in that? Yeah. He wow. Was the star of the video. How do you like Breaking Bad? I fucking love it. Yeah. Do you want to do, you, do, you want to do some TV? Like, I mean, it's getting nice and dark now. I could see like a Dean Carr TV <laughs> show, <laughs> some <laughs> kind <laughs> of show, right? Let's go, babe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now... Yeah, there's there he is, Quint right there. I got a painting of Quint on my wall. Just notice that behind your head there. Isn't that great? I thought it was a drum head. A drum head. It looks like a bass drum head, doesn't it? <laughs> Dave Lombardo needs two two Quint. That would be sick, right? Quint. I, I love Jaws. I'm a Jaws addict. Yeah. Now, now, what about uh, Hollywood, man? I mean, how long you been here? You love it, right? I love it. I don't really. If I'm home, yeah, I love it, but I'm totally becoming a hermit. I just stay in my home, and if people want to see me, come over and see me. Why is that? I, I don't go out and do, like, all the flashy, like, 90s stuff, and yeah. that was a lot of just fucking glamorous. Ooh, let's go hang out with uh, Mick Jagger and blah, 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 and oh, oh, here's a bunch of cocaine and stuff like that. It's like, I'd just rather stay home and mind my own business. <laughs> no shit. I've had enough of that. Are you? Is Dean Carr getting old? Maybe I'm getting a little older. Yeah, yeah. that's weird. Because like we went and saw Mastodon and Ghost, and you left after the third song. Sorry, I hate Ghost. You hate Ghost. Now, why do you hate Ghost? You were ripping on them. You're like these guys are lip syncers. Why don't you pull up my my uh, uh, Puppet Master video? Pull it up. Oh, oh pull okay. up my Dr. Dre and Cypress Hill video for Puppet Master and and tell me why I. Oh, because they ripped off the look. Oh, are you fucking kidding me? Okay, let's look. Here it is. Puppet, Puppet Master, Master video. Video. We're gonna get that going. Uh, Dr. Dre. 
Here it is. Not, not, not just that, but then the rest of the band that looks like they they want to be in the mentors. And they're wearing, yeah, like yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah. Now you got a mentor shirt on. This was made by El Duce and given to me personally. Fuck. Uh oh, there's my phone. Turn that off. Okay, let's see. Uh, oh, look here. It says uh, content is blocked. Oh wait. You gotta find that, man. Oh, hold on. Let's find it. Okay, so what's it called? Puppet Master. Puppet Master, Soul Assassin. Puppet Master, Dr. Dre. So, uh. It's like. I got it right here. Anybody that wants to go and look at my Dr. Dre and Cypress Hill video for Puppet Master. Got it right here. Be real, right there. there. Right here. Here we go. Watch and. We're going to watch and uh, see why he hates a ghost. No, I don't hate ghosts. I just have like little respect for people that don't like find their own originality. Right. Find your own thing. Who's your favorite band? Slayer? <sighs> Priest. Priest? No shit. Let's talk that. Let's, Judas Priest? Judas Priest, number one. Then I'll take some Iron Maiden. What was the first time you saw him? I saw him on the... Oh, right here. I got it right here. Oh, right here. There, right here. I saw him on the Point of Entry tour. I saw him on Unleashed in the East. Oh, you did? I was 14. Where at, Seattle? Seattle, I have my... my oh, here room. it is. Oh, I see. He's got the look of the singer of Ghost. Exact. Look at that. Fucking, it's the same. Come on, dude. Hello. Wake up, people. <laughs> That's exact. Wake up, people. How is it working with Dre? Dude, we had two 350-pound fat porn chicks on, on my set here. Yep. That are naked with, with saddles on their back and midgets riding the saddles. And this one of the, the big fat bitches was grabbing his fucking johnson all day long and he's like can somebody get this fucking bitch off my my action <laughs> oh dre saying that yeah but he has like eight bodyguards totally loaded with fucking like guns so much ammo and i got kind of tired of looking at his like his tough guys and i said hold on all you you tough guys i'm dressing you up like nuns because <laughs> then they, they start dancing with the devil women. I gave them something to do and, instead of looking there and I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Man. So that's I dressed, unbelievable. I dressed all his tough guys up like women. <laughs> like women? <laughs> Women's. Man, Dr. Dre. How many videos did you do with him? One? Just that. Did he like you? Yeah, he freaking loved it. That guy's cool, huh? It's- Hello. Yeah, back, yeah. Back so, on the ghost thing. Yeah, so ghost ripped off your puppet master straight up. The singer ripped off the look. It's absolutely the same thing. Yeah, it is. It's stupid. And even if I close my eyes, I'm sorry, I'm not not a fan musically. New music I like. I, I'm such a freak for High and Fire. I fucking love that. Band. You love High and Fire, wow, huh? Wow, wow, wow. Fucking nine string guitar. Matt Pike is my bro, and his hand stretches. That's a Sam Fran it's band. Just like a fucking hand like that. Wow, wow. The claw. Doing the claw. Yeah. They're playing with COC this week. Oh, they are? Where? House of Blues or something? I'm not sure, but I'll be definitely hitting that show. So Priest is your favorite band? Number one, man. I've seen him probably 16 times. Wow. How do you feel about KK out? You know I'm fucking pissed about that, man. KK Downing is my favorite guitar player. Number one slam dunk. Fucking on the floor. KK Downing leaving that band. And it it broke my heart. I I admit I went to Vegas last year to, to see him. And I saw Richie filling his shoes. And... Wearing the shades, yeah, the, the he dresses like him. Just trying to emulate him so much, and it, and it, and I was like, the, I was totally the grumpy guy with his arms crossed <laughs> <laughs> for like three songs. But I gotta admit, after that, I fucking let him down, and I was fucking, I was rocking. It was Thin Lizzy, who's like, who's in that band anymore? Yeah, so fucking dumb. But it was they were amazing. Yeah, I know, but it still, was Thin Lizzy. Oh my god! There, there was three bands. It was three 
bands that, that you would love? Oh, I went to that. It was Thin Lizzy, Judas Priest, and and and, and fucking uh, Zach Wild. Oh, B- Black yeah, Label. Black Label. That's right. I saw that. With it's like the guitar solo is like twenty minutes. It's like I love you, but come on, right? You don't need a twenty-five minute like ripping solo. A priest said they were gonna like retire, and then they don't. They did the old Kiss thing. You know, they're like, "This is our last tour." I go see it, and they're still out forever. What's your favorite Priest record? Unleash the Needs, man. I've yeah. been asses in so many interviews. and Like, if you're on a desert island... Da, 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 Unleashed man, in the it's East. It's all about the sooner, man. Seen a rider rocks away at the sun. <laughs> right? Sit up! Sit Yeah, and KK just destroying on that. How many whammy bars did you break on that? Oh, and he used track. to play the cool V before he had the perm. He had the straight hair. He looked like Shanker. Yeah. You know? Yeah, they played Gibson. Yeah, Oz like, only. Then we then we get endorsed the Hamer. endorsed by Hamer and like yeah, just doo doo city K- Kaler tremolos and yeah, doo doo. Like, stay true to the shit, man. You're right, Play dude. That Gibson shit, man. You know what's weird is sometimes I feel like I'm shitting on my my uh, idols, but it's weird. I think that they like I don't know because you know I see like uh, like Slayer. They fucking go out. They're exactly the same as I saw them 20 years ago. They're amazing, right? But then you see other bands, and they're just like, what happened? Well, it's definitely music is at its all-time low right now. But it, it is. Our, our favorites are shredding as, as huge as ever. And they're out touring, and Slayer is just tough as nails right now. and. They're unbelievable. Now let's talk about this. Uh, so last night I interviewed uh, Paul B- or uh, Paul B- uh Gary Holt from Exodus, and who's playing with Slayer now, and Dave Lombardo, and they're doing a kind of a, a soundtrack uh, to this movie you're doing. Now you're doing a documentary on the House of Shock. Tell us about that. This this movie is l- like y- your hair will stand up on your arm when when you see the footage that we shot, but. I spent all of October in New Orleans uh, filming this with uh, our buddy Shawnee and uh, producer Chris Bonifay and my editor, cameraman, uh, Bill Yukich. We brought we brought the all-star team down for like a, a week and uh, for, for the, the main, main stuff that's like the huge like stage show thing uh, that the people while they're waiting in line to get into the haunted house have to tell them what the house of shock is it's a haunted house it's a haunted house it's like four thousand people come through a night it's the most fucked up and uh, and phil from uh pantera is in charge of it right no phil from pantera started it 20 years ago okay and i think he he got busy with pantera and and uh wasn't around or what it was a hard interview to get with Phil, but I got the interview with Phil, and it's amazing. It's like uh, I think everybody just parted ways, and there's there's no bad blood there. But but um, who's running it now? It's run by Ross Carpelman and uh, my buddy Jay and Steve. And 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 Steve owns a pyro company. This pyro for Motley Crue and Kiss, but oh. he he d- runs all. A big, big, big part of House of Shock is the the fire and the pyro. And you th- kiss her Motley Crue turns their pyro up. This is like fucking down in New Orleans, and there's no nobody telling them what the rules are. So it's eighty foot flames up in the air, <laughs> and you you get a sunburn. <laughs> now, now people don't understand. This isn't just like some haunted house. It's like some epic event that happens for a couple months. It's and it's it's like it's definitely satanic it's got like crazy end of the world uh, overtones and uh, kind of a slipknotish uh, looking people right and it's just straight up like one one of a kind yeah it's it's definitely rated at one of the top attractions in the country and after th- this bomb is going to be unleashed it's i mean people are going to be flying in from japan and like 
Prague and stuff to, to, go, to go to this place. How much is it to get in? It's like 30 or something? I think it's 25 bucks, 25 bucks. Right. It's not outrageous. No. Not at all. Nope. For, yeah, good nights, like 4,000 people come through this place. But it's like, it's all family and it's like mothers and fathers and all the children work there and they've worked there for 18 years. Um, but the families that work together if they work in the same room like the butcher shop or the meat grinding factory or the swamp or the church of satan it's like uh they have their stuff so rehearsed i mean they're actors they're great actors right but i mean a guy's grabbing his wife by the hair she knows he's going to grab her by the hair and she's bloody as shit and he's pulling her by her hair on the floor as you come into into the room and then a giant like animal human beast that stands 12 feet tall like walks right in front of you that will scare the fucking shit out of you <laughs> as like uh someone's at the pulpit just squealing like satanic verses and <laughs> it, it's 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 metal it is metal it's so over the top it is metal, man. And the soundtrack that we're we're doing to this piece is is going to be so great. Ross Robinson's producing this thing. That's right. So yeah. it's got it's got Dave Lombardo, Dave Lombardo, Gary Holt, Tech Nine. Uh, hopefully, my buddy Necro is going to throw some 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 rap in there. Sid from uh, Slipknot. And I think Nick uh, Oliveri is going to play bass. Nick Oliveri, love. I didn't know that, but I love that. Um, Oh, and Ross uh, unveiled like a unheard song from Corey Taylor that's going to uh, be the vocal. And I heard it just the raw vocal, and it was I got go yeah my yeah I get goosebumps easy, but <laughs> I got goosed. Well, this, I mean, this, when's the film coming out? This thing's going to be epic. Well, we I think we wrapped everything up last night. With our interview with the uh, disciple from the Church of Satan last night, that taught me so much shit about the Church of Satan that I had no no clue about. Now tell me about that. There's actually a Church of Satan. There's a Church of Satan. She studied under Anton Lavey, stayed and lived there for a while up in in San Francisco, and and a uh, very well spoken lady. Um, but the the funny thing is, it's it's was to hear that they don't even believe in Satan, but they are the Church of Satan. They don't believe in Satan. No. What do they believe in? They believe in just like uh, like freedom and doing what's best for yourself. And it's it's uh, a lot of like uh, internal pleasures and, and things like that. But just being a it's it's about being a good person and not feeling fucking guilty like f fucking. Catholic shit will put that shit on you in a second. I learned a lot of stuff last night. It was really Church of Satan's about me is is about into good stuff. It's about yeah, it's just about being a good person. That's awesome. Yeah. About being a good it's, person. It's, That'd be a great bumper sticker, right? The Church of Satan. It's about being a good person. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. Now, is there church is there Church of Satan's uh, all across America like a like a a chain or you know what I'm saying? Like it's members. They don't, they don't have like, like, like you meet at church every Sunday or something. Right. Like that. It's, it's basically you become a member and, and do it at, at your own will or put as much into it as you want. But, uh, it's not a bunch of fucking caped fucking candled goblin people and stuff like that. It's none of that shit. No, it's totally misunderstood. No shit. <laughs> That's insane, man, because like nobody's really captured that. Maybe that could be your next documentary. <laughs> Would they let you in on that? Because that like people don't know anything about Satan. You know what I'm saying? Is there like a Jesus for Satan? Because I don't know, like a, a guy below him? Well, I mean, they have their icons or their um symbolism. We talked a lot about that stuff like the Baphomet character with the goat and oh yeah that's copywritten by the their church and that's real but uh i mean that it's i think uh every i think the catholic 
church like put like a put all created all that stuff to make them seem like that because it's scary. like their enemy but the, there's no enemy to the church of satan they're they're just free people and they they don't consider anybody their their enemy but of course leave it to the catholics to right f- fucking fuck you up and fill your head full of guilt you're doing <laughs> yeah that's a... it was a great night we had a i had a big big like eye-opening yeah expansion of of the thing last night so how was, did you find her like did you put an ad on craigslist or something <laughs> no, i mean no nobody really t- like you, if you had a job and you were like yeah i'm into the church of saint and they'd probably just fire you right i mean people don't say that you know what i mean i well i don't know i don't know how many how many practicing people there are but i i know that just because you're maybe a, a member of the sect that that uh, they probably all don't agree on the same thing or all get along. I think it's it's just more of practice of life. It's just more about just taking care of you and like making yourself the best person you can be. I don't know. Maybe next week I'm signing up. Whoa. <laughs> then you, maybe you go undercover and you do like one of those 60 minute style stings on them. <laughs> I don't know. It sounds like to me like how you've lived your life since I've known you, right? You I mean, know me a long time, Dino. Yeah. How long have I known you? Like fuck, 15 years or something. Probably 15 years. Probably back when I bought the green, green Challenger. Yeah. Green, we're car freaks also. Yes, we are car freaks. And Mopar or no car. <laughs> I never even heard that. No, Mopar, no car. <laughs> Unbelievable, man. I do have a pretty sweet ride. Yeah, you do. It's nice. You drive it around Hollywood. It's bright green, right? Bright green, 70 Challenger, matching engine, 440. I just dropped a 440 in the 65 Plymouth station wagon. Too. You did into that coffin machine? Yeah, that thing like nearly does wheelies now. Oh, uh, we have the same mechanic, the guy over there. Lyman. Yeah, yeah. Bob Lyman is. I sold him a motorcycle. He's a great dude. Isn't he great? He is. Recently divorced. I don't know about that, but yeah, I'm sure he's. Doing well, he bought a motorcycle. Recently divorced, and he's ready to party it up. Yeah, party it up. <laughs> pick up your bra. Pick up your blouse. Get the hell out of my house. Oh fuck! That's almost rap. Pick up your bra. What is it? It's the fucking mentors. Oh, yeah, I see. Pick, pick up your bra, pick up your blouse. Get the hell out of my house. Bitch. <laughs> I I I met uh I met the mentor. Well, of course, I had the mentors at the Stone, San Francisco. <laughs> and uh what's his name? Took his pants off. And, and he just smelled Dude. Yeah, like he just smelled like like homeless man for like thirty years. Yep. El Duce. He he, he hit a pretty rock bottom there for a while. Yeah, how did he die? A, pr- a a train? He got decapitated in Riverside on the train tracks. Like, how did that happen? Did he want to do that? Well, he did it on his own, and there's all this bullshit that Courtney Love fucking had him killed or whatever. Oh, fuck God. that, and fuck her. She's a twat. <laughs> yeah. She's a garbage but can. He was decapitated on the train tracks in Riverside. He yeah. probably was just drinking and hey, oh, I'm gonna lay my head down. I'm tired. No, man, you think? Like who does that? Like just lays down on the tracks. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I remember that story. You like they talk said, to Alan Wrench about that. Is Alan Wrench still alive? Alan Wrench is alive. Yeah, I spoke to him yesterday. I haven't seen that guy in twenty years. So what do you got? You're doing this project, and then what's coming up? Um, I don't know. You got something for me? Uh, my stuff's all f- no money. <laughs> you know, hey. Oh, let's talk a little comedy real quick. Let's do that. Because you uh, you do come to my show sometimes, and which thanks for coming. Um, what kind of comedy you like? Like you you like edgy comedy, of course. But who do you like? Do you have guys you listen to? I love your show. You keep it raunchy and you, you keep it alive and that's the shit i like that's you are completely like like the perfect example of of my favorite comedian you do you, you listen to comedians you keep it raw yeah, yeah, yeah like who do you like 
Like Doug uh, Stanhope or um, something? You like Kinnison, of course, from the day, right? Yes. Cat Williams. You like Cat Williams? Yeah, I've been to a few of his shows. Um, of course, I've worked with Chris Rock a lot. You have? What have you done for Chris Rock? He had a HBO series. And we oh, yeah. Did, Were you on that? We did all the campaign stuff for him. Wow, that's cool. But you, you... <laughs> Just, I'm just starting out, dude. Uh, but you, you put the raunch into the stuff, and I like the raunch. Crabby crabs? Yeah. That's your favorite. Yeah. Crabs. Crabs? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's so, I mean, that. thanks for coming down to the, com the comedy shows, though. That's cool, because it's like, I, I know you're crazy Are busy. Are you still there every week? I'm there every night. What? I do the comedy store and the laugh factory pretty much every night. I was I just passed at the comedy store and they've been putting me up like crazy, which is you would love the comedy store because it's just the dark, dark palace. It's totally your vibe. What's the one that I go to? Laugh Factory is the one you've been to a few times, but now that I'm working at the comedy store, you should come down and check. I don't think it. I've been there. Yeah, you gotta go in there. That's Polly Shore owns that, you know, his mom. And that's where Kennison and Pryor and, and on Sunset? Yeah, across the street from House of Blues, the big black building. I would like to come to that. Yeah, you got to come down to that and uh, rock it. Yeah, you'll love that place. That's totally. You bring your camera too, because it's got. It, some people say it's haunted. You know, that'd be a great documentary if you did one on that place because it's unbelievably. Uh, it's yeah. the coolest spot in Hollywood. This documentary stuff <clears throat> just got me thinking about how many cool freaking things i could do and like really get into like i've gotten into this this haunted house thing it's like been my life for almost three months now yeah and i haven't even started editing i want to do a documentary <laughs> on uh dan the greens they were the first big festivals back in the 70s that every concert is uh taken from nowadays but that was bill graham would do these multi shows like one show would be uh you know a Aerosmith, Ted Nugent, ACDC, Cheap Trick, Mahogany Rush. I'm buying my ticket right now. That's eight bucks. Then another show would be like, um, you know, the, uh, the uh, Frank Marino, Zeppelin, Trower Priest, right there. Fuck off. That's the last show. Of that painting Who did there. That piece. Now that piece was done by a guy. Um, Dennis Larkin, who painted the scrims of every concert, um, uh, of every day on the green, th those were scrims that he painted that were 20 stories high. I found him, and he lives in New Mexico now, and I asked him, oh, you got any pictures? And he goes, I'll paint you the last concert I ever did. And that's 77 Zeppelin, last time they played in America. I'm looking at this painting at Dean's house right now, and it's pretty cool. It actually has texture to it. I think. What's I'll, 3D? I think I want to touch it. Oh, don't touch it. I'm going to touch it. No, don't touch it, man. Shut up. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm touching it. It's so... You in feel it? Yeah, it's 3D. Yeah, I'm touching it. <laughs> Isn't that thing epic? That's yeah, amazing. <laughs> so that'd be a good documentary, right? Dude. Why don't you do one on Priest? Oh. Will they let you? Let me get this thing done first, and we'll chase chase the next thing. But the the whole format of the documentary stuff is it's very, cool, very cool. Yeah, it is. Well, thanks for coming over, man. It's been six months. I've been trying to get you on. Sorry. No, don't worry about it. I know you're crazy and and fun. You know what I mean? You're like a Hunter S. Thompson. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're the new Hunter S. Thompson. Well, thank you, Dean. You don't write, but you shoot amazing photos. Uh, where can we find you? Dean Carr on Facebook. DeanCarr.com. K-A-R-R. -R. Yep. And uh, and people want want to get photos done by you, they can contact you there, right? Yep. What is it, like 7000 bucks or something for a photo shoot? Go away. <laughs> Go away. That That's just for one photo, right? Okay, I'm out of here. Okay. Thanks, dude. For love you, Dino. I love you too, man. So thanks for coming down. That's Dean Carr right there. Everybody, uh, check him out. Also, don't forget to subscribe, iTunes, let there be talk, tell your friends. Dean Carr, king of metal photos and videos, and entrepreneur. And pick up that new ghost album. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, you fuckers. See you guys. 